the challenges facing beekeepers and beekeeping has so has raised awareness just amazingly among the general public and the demand for new colonies for people who want to help and make a difference has it's just created this incredible demand for new colonies which is basically exclusively met by packages from the south The piece that most people don't understand is the critical importance of the queens. The queen is the mother of everybody in the beehive. And so basically you can pick up the genetics of this bee yard, which happened at her mating, and you take her and you put her wherever you put her, that is gonna be this bee yard's genetics wherever she goes. Come on, honey. There she goes. This little cage shuts and I trap the queen in there with some attendants to feed her because queens don't feed themselves. Now this hive is queenless, so that means they're basically at this time of year screwed. But what I'll do is I'll let them be queenless for a day or so, and they'll lose the smell of her pheromone, and I'll combine them with another colony that's queen right. And so this colony will get twice as much brood in bees and still only have the one mommy. And this mommy goes from here to Kennebunkport. So my project compared three groups of colonies, uh, northern raised nucleus colonies that had been produced here in Maine, uh, two groups of package colonies, one group that was to just run straight as the packages come from the south, and then the other group was commercially produced packages, but I took their queens out and replaced them with northern raised queens from Vermont. And so the question was, would those requeen packages do as well or not as the northern raised nucleus colonies um, or would they do better than the packages, the straight packages to begin with? What would be the differences from those three groups? The, the application itself wasn't terribly taxing. I think the worst piece of it was that the timing for the project starts is very counterintuitive to at least my little corner of agriculture and so I had to assume that I was going to get it and make all kinds of arrangements and then fortunately I did. <laughs> so here's another queen. I have crush on dark queens. Part of my grant was that I uh, created the hive assessment tool that we used at every single inspection. It has a number of different points on the colony strength. It starts with the queen, diseases and parasites and medications, honey removal. It made it a little slower inspecting the colonies to back, actually have to go through and mark things, but it, it created a consistency and has kind of taught me to systematically go through the same evaluation of every colony. It's a lot easier to be objective when you are using a tool. Of course I knew when the colonies were dead or alive in the spring, which ones were dead and alive. But I hadn't remembered which ones were who, and so I was actually kind of anxious to compile the data and get the numbers of how many survived and how many had belonged to which groups. Actually compiling the data takes some time, but basically you just need to find out what happened and figure out how you're going to communicate that and then you just create your documents that say what happened you you know you make a couple of spreadsheets and you you know write out a couple of word documents you upload those to the SARE website uh, all you have to do is tell what happened I mean you don't have to write a dissertation I truly expected that I would see a big difference between the packages and the nukes. I knew I would, because the nukes are so much more a healthy unit. The surprise was that the requeened packages did so much better. The honey production and the health of the colony was so dramatically better than the straight packages. The project itself was a lot more time consuming than just running 25 extra beehives. It slowed me down, but on the other hand, I just learned so much about 
educating and talking about what I'm doing, I learned how to rethink and also how to communicate about things in a way that I never would have if I hadn't done this project. It used to be, or it often is when I'm teaching, I'm just talking about whatever, I know this, and I feel like when I'm doing that, people, that I'm bragging or showing off about what I know or what I've done. And in the SARE project, because it was the project that I'm talking about, I felt like I could, I didn't have to worry about being a show off. And I could really talk about what the colonies had done because the colonies belong to SARE and not, it's not like they're my children. And I'm like, this, this one's the smartest kid in the world. You know, I really got to just kind of be open when giving presentations about what had happened. The actual grant process changed the way I do beekeeping in that it first of all taught me to talk about beekeeping and things that I was doing in a much more clear way. And it also changed the way that I think about on a day to day when I'm doing a hive assessment, assessment even if it's not, even if I'm not using my sheet, I'm thinking all of those little categories that I used to do and, and I didn't used to think about my colonies that way. Doing the final report work and following up with this kind of outreach is what has got me saying, you know, I do want to continue that work I did and I want to show, I'm going to group it down to just the packages now and I want a more statistically significant number. But that is, it's led me to the next path where I really want to pinpoint in on that difference. So yeah, I'm going to apply for another one. We'll find out next March. <laughs>